Hello, everyone. I apologize for that uh, that little technical snafu. This is uh, one of, one of the things we get when we uh, we become fairly popular. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was um, we had two webinars scheduled at the same time, one here in the U.S. and one uh, with you wonderful people. So I apologize for making you wait like that. Uh, we should have everything uh, lined up now. Let me get my other presenters back on the line. And uh, we will start this up here in 30 seconds. So I'm going to find, um, in fact, let me just share my screen so you can see who our presenters are. Um, so we've got Mark Shapcott from Alarm.com. Let me find him in our list and make him a presenter. Okay. Mark, you should be able to turn on your camera now. And then we've also got, um, oh, I don't well, I want to make my panelist actually, so that'll stop sharing my screen briefly, but that's okay. I'll take it back. And then uh, Paul Andrews uh, as well, and let each of them um, introduce themselves. Paul, I don't see you on the list. Um, let me take back presenter mode to myself. Really appreciate the, uh, the patience with everyone today. Um, I apologize for this. Um, well, let's get started. I know you guys have waited long enough and I uh, really appreciate everyone that's taking time out of their busy day to, um, you know, learn about uh, this new product line and uh, get involved in this. Uh, we'll keep watching for Paul to get him on the line um, as well. But uh, my name is Jeremy McLaren. Uh, I run marketing globally for Johnson Controls and uh, very excited to share with you um, our newest product line coming to uh, the United Kingdom. You've seen the email. Uh, that you use to register today. You've also seen, um, you know, probably some other emails that we've sent as well. Uh, we want this to be an interactive presentation, so please, um, you know, chat in your questions, chat in your comments. Uh, would love to hear where you're where you're calling in from, uh, whether you're working from home or from uh, the office, things like that. Um, um, you know, let let me know. I personally, as I was mentioning before, we got cut off. Uh, working out of Utah and working out of my home today. We have a, a small office and uh, marketing office here in Utah, USA. Um, and we've got headquarters. Johnson Controls, of course, has headquarters all over the nation. So um, I've got some people saying that there's no audio. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, Manjeet says he can't hear. Um, Ian, Marcin, okay, Rob, you said you can hear it. All perfect. Okay, perfect. I'm glad to hear that. Good. Uh, and I'll keep looking for Paul. Um, to make sure that I can bring him in as one of our presenters as well. Uh, oh, there he is. Okay. Um, and we'll make Paul a panelist here. And then uh, Mark and Paul, if you guys uh, will turn on your cameras as well, we want to make sure that you have a chance to, you know, say hello to the audience and introduce yourselves um, very quickly. Hello. You know, great. Mark, why don't we start with you? Tell us, uh, tell us about your role at Alarm.com and what Alarm.com is briefly. Mark, can you hear us? Boy, all kinds of technical difficulties today. Thanks for being patient, everyone. Um, uh, while we're waiting for Mark to to get connected and work work well, Paul, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, about what you do? I'm, I'm imagining many of these people on the line today may know you already, but uh, tell us about your role uh, at Johnson Controls and and how and why you're on the webinar today. Good afternoon, everybody. So I look after the UK and Ireland business, uh, the sales director. I've been with the company now just under eight years, um, but I've been in the industry for around 14 years now. Um, so I think I know uh, quite a lot about the UK and Ireland industry uh, and the marketplace. And showing you closest today, um, you know, we want to show you a different product um, that we feel is what the market has needed for many years. Um, and, and that's what people are telling us. That's a feedback that we've had so far. And I'm sure once you see the presentation today, you will agree. Um, so let's hope so. That's a great, a great introduction, Paul. Thank you. Mark, can, can you hear us okay? All right. Well, hopefully he can uh, he can join us. We want to make sure that we um, have this as you know him as part of this conversation today. Um, and if not, we'll do our best to represent Alarm.com. You know, Paul, you mentioned the market, and I'm glad you did because that's actually where I want to start today. 
um, I want to talk about the state of the market and I'm going to share with you some information that is relevant in the US market although we know that the the UK market um, and even the whole European market is very very similar generally speaking I think you'll agree that um, most people that have a security system probably looks like one of the ones on the screen here uh, it's like a rubber button keypad uh, many of them are still connected by landlines. Some are using a 3G or older cellular connectivity. Um, very few of them have any kind of encryption. And now we're starting to see new entrants into the security space in the form of companies like Nest and Ring and Simply Safe. Uh, these companies are basically saying, hey, we can make a little crappy rubber button keypad too, and we can, you know, make an app for it. And, and why don't you get security with us instead? Um, we jokingly call this Toys R Us security in many cases because you know, it doesn't feel like real security. In many cases, there's not encryption. There's no encrypted sensors there. There's not a, a you know, a long range play uh, for, you know, sensor range. Uh, there's not a lot of connectivity. There's not a lot of breadth to the offering. Um, and when you look at the opposite side in the tech industry, and, you know, this isn't just Silicon Valley, but all over the world, we're all carrying smartphones. Okay. I think it's safe to say, and I'd love to hear from, from the people on the line today, if you are carrying a smart, if you're not carrying a smartphone, I'd love to hear what you're carrying. Uh, but I'm guessing most people are carrying a um, a smartphone of some sort. Um, and if that's the case, um, you know, then we have a reality, and that is that you know we understand that touchscreens are everywhere. We're wearing them. Uh, we've got voice control. We've got this great Internet of Things. Um, you know, rocket ship that's going on where everything's becoming connected. And there's a reality that I think we're all facing or th that we maybe even subconsciously understand and that smartphones are the benchmark of technology. Whenever I have a piece of technology that I interact with, I immediately compare it sometimes subconsciously to my phone. If I get in a car, for example, and I'm interacting with the, the touchscreen display, you know, is it as fast? Is the resolution as good? Uh, are the, is it as intuitive? You know, does it feel like my phone uh, and things like Apple um, CarPlay and Android Auto have made those feel more like our phones than ever before. And a lot of people are copying their UI design and things like that to that. So it's it's a really phenomenal experience when you get something that feels like your phone. And, you know, as an industry, you know, and, and I believe that we're all, you know, part of the security, um, you know, and smart home smart business industry, consumer expectations are changing and we have to agree to evolve. We all have to agree that the stuff on the on the side of the screen that looks like rubber button keypads isn't good enough. And when you look at things like the Google Home Hub or the, the Amazon Echo Show, these are people that are coming into our space. They're coming into our space and bringing products, maybe not full security products, maybe not you know great robust solutions like what you can offer, um, or what you will be able to offer, uh, you know, when, once the, today's presentation is complete. But they are offering something, and they're still working. Google, Amazon, and others, and Apple, and all of them want to be in this space. The connected home space is a really, really exciting place to be. And that includes security, life safety, lifestyle, energy management, all of it. In fact, if you look at the data, the top five smartphone devices by purchase intention are on the screen here. The number one device that people plan to buy is the smart video doorbell. 25% of people said they plan on buying a video doorbell. 24% say a smart light bulb. 23% say a smart thermostat. 43% of people say that they plan to purchase one of these devices this year. Okay. That means, and, and we're, you know, this is November. This is, you know, this data is already kind of old, which means that they probably already bought it. And the question I would pose to you is, do you want them to buy it from your local electronics store or from the internet? Or do you want them to buy it from you? Because I believe that with a solution like what we're going to share with you today, that you can actually have them buy it from you. And not only buy it from you, but then buy the next item from you, and the next item from you, and the next item from you. And we're going to show you how the solutions we have to present to you are really, really powerful and will help you provide exactly what the consumers are looking for. Okay? Look at this. These are stats here in the United States. You can see that over the past four years, five years, uh, actually six years now, it's 2020. So the past six years, the number of devices installed by security dealers has changed. Look at the cameras, okay? In 2014, the attach rate on cameras was just over 20%, okay? Now here it is close to 40%, okay? Smart lighting was down at 10%, is now more than twice that. 
video doorbells didn't exist in 2014, not even 2017. And here they are in 2018 cropping up. And we know, you know, at least here in the States, there's a close to a 75% attach rate on video doorbells when you get it, when you, uh, an individual buys a security system from you. So huge, huge thermostats, door locks, the, the trends are just moving upward. And this means more revenue, revenue opportunity for you. This more, means more money for you. This means more, you know, customers for you. They're going to share their, their, um, their experiences with their neighbors, their friends, et cetera, and bring more devices to you. So um, again, this, we want this to be an interactive presentation. If you have questions about this data, questions about the information, things like that, please put it in the chat. We would love to interact with you. So thank you very much, Sharon, Jonathan, Ian, Kristen you know, Marcin, Rob, all of you that have already chatted in and, and you know, we hope the rest of you will, will make some comments to us and, and ask some questions. Let's talk a little bit about the company, okay? So, um, uh, Qualsys, the name of the, the company Qualsys uh, was actually just recently acquired by Johnson Controls, started out as a small group of people and the, when they came in the, into the industry, they were really facing up against these giants, Honeywell, GE Security, Tyco DSC, these are most likely names that are familiar to you. And a lot of people said, how on earth is this small group of Silicon Valley people going to compete with these massive, massive giants? Well, what they didn't realize is that the partnerships that were behind Qualsys were so much larger than Honeywell or GE or any of those other companies. You look at Alarm.com, um, you know, they're a massive, massive company, global company that is providing security and smart home technology you know, to the entire world. Uh, Johnson and Controls, you know, with the, you know, on the on the line today, absolutely massive company with tremendous resources. Qualcomm is the maker of almost all of the smartphone and tablet chipsets in the world. Um, they're the ones who invented LTE. Android, everyone knows Android, right? Google designed Android to be the, you know, the world's most popular mobile operating system. And Foxconn's a company you may not have heard of before, but they are the company that make all of the Apple products. Uh, Cisco routers, Xboxes, PlayStations, basically almost any consumer electronics device um, in the world is made out of, Fox, out of a Foxconn facility. And so all of these have become partnerships with us um, so that we're able to bring uh, a really robust and flexible software and hardware combined solution to the security industry. Now, you may have seen a press release a little while ago, the Qualsys company itself was acquired by Johnson Controls. And the reason I bring this up is it's very important for us to understand that the Qualsys founders and leadership team have remained in Silicon Valley and have key roles now in the Johnson Controls global intrusion business. So the same innovation that you know was able to turn this into the premier solution in the United States is now here available um, through globally through the power of Johnson Controls. So we're very excited about it. We're going to show you a few milestones. Uh, the company itself started back in 2012 before it was, it was acquired by Johnson Controls. We launched the company in 2013. Um, we produced our first generation IQ panel in 2014. Um, Tyco, which is owned by Johnson Controls, made a small investment in 2015. And through that investment, we were able to develop and release the IQ panel 2. Um, then we were able to release a seven inch touchscreen with IQ remote, um, and then the IQ panel 2 plus in, in the United States. And then we went commercial and brought um, you know commercial features. Now you notice that the boxes in there all of those represent unique differentiating software features that we added to our hardware and our software um, that no one else had at the time. So we are literally bringing new features on a regular basis. And we're going to talk about you know, each of those in depth today to make, make sure that you feel comfortable with it. Um, before I move on, and we're going to talk about hardware here and give you an, a nice hardware uh, overview. Um, Eric says, what was that expression you used to de describe the DIY security products? Um, uh, are you talking about rubber button keypads? Crappy rubber button keypads? <laughs> that's probably the one you're thinking of, right, Eric? Yeah. Um, and, that's, and that's really many of them, you know, basically, if we know that touchscreens were everywhere, you know, I'm not going to mince words. I, I don't think that, uh, oh, Toys R Us security. Uh, James clarified, yeah, Toys R Us security. That's that's another one too. Um, and then uh, Rob Kennedy says another pallet of panels la uh, landed today. The future is here. So that's great. Keep those chats coming, guys. I love this conversation going on. Let's talk about hardware. So when we first released IQ Panel, uh, we basically said we want to start with a computer or tablet, okay, and we want to add security. And so we took the two of these and kind of melded them together. 
what happened when we did that is we ended up with the IQ panel. Okay, now this is a really powerful solution. We have inside six different wireless radios all working together simultaneously. If you don't realize what a technological feat that is, um, I understand why you wouldn't. That's a, it's a lot of things to think about. LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Power G, Z-Wave Plus, all working simultaneously within this tiny thin form factor without the need of external antennas and radios and, and long cellular dongles and things like that. This literally, the, just the, the manufacturing feat, the hardware engineering feat to get all those working so they don't interfere with each other. We call it a wireless rock concert because in many ways, there is lots of noise wireless noise coming from each of these radios at any given time and they cannot interfere with each other that's one of the reasons we chose foxconn as our partner really providing a great combination of radios and uh hardware engineering to provide us with the very best solution possible so the reason i bring this up is because when you install this in a home there is you know obviously you're going to have power g sensors that are going to be powering many of you using power g today um you want those life safety and security sensors to work without having interference from the lights, locks, and thermostats on Z-Wave Plus, without having interference from the cameras on Wi-Fi or from the smartphones attached by Bluetooth, you know, or the cellular signals coming in over LTE. They've all got to work simultaneously with each other. And I think we've done a very, very good job producing something that is extremely powerful. Okay. Um, Mike Hayes asked a question. Um, face recognition, is this available now in the UK? I believe it is. It's through the alarm.com platform. Um, and we'll talk it here in just a minute about, uh, about that. So let me, let me, uh, pause that question for just a minute. I want to share with you a couple features, a couple key features that are really setting the IQ panel apart. Okay. The very first one is looks and looks is not just you know the fact that it's uh plastic and glass and you know looks great on the wall looks is also the user interface when you touch this when you swipe it when you interact with it it feels like your phone um if you haven't had a chance to try one of these go down to your local distributor try one out play around with it you are going to be blown away by how intuitive it is you don't have to spend hours educating your customer on how to use the system anymore because they'll look at it touch it, interact with it. We're using real language. Even your technicians are going to find themselves having an easier time installing it because the user interface is so intuitive and so easy to use. And that brings me to software. Software is a really, really important piece of the equation. And we've got a lot of software innovation that's happened over the years. I showed you a few on a, on a previous slide. But every time we release a software update, there are new features being added to it. And that's the beauty that, that I think, personally, of all the different features we have, the most powerful feature is the software update. The ability to take what you have today, and instead of saying, oh, new features came out, I'll have to take out the old one and put in something new, that now you can simply do a software update. We're used to that with our smartphones. We didn't used to be used to that. That used to be, in fact, let me tell you a little story. When I first, when the iPhone first came out, I was enamored. I loved it. I was really, really excited about it. And I thought, you know, this is a cool product and I'm really excited to get it. And I got I got one of the first iPhones. In fact, I still have it at my office sitting on my desk. And when I was playing around with it, I was showing it off to my friends and I just loved the user interface. Really, really loved it. Well, Android came out about six months later. And when Android came out, they had a, a video camera in it. Mine only had a still camera. And I was honestly, I was a bit disappointed. I remember thinking when my friends were like, well, I got the latest Android phone. Let's look at this new thing. And it's got a video camera on it, not just a, a, a photo camera. And I remember thinking, man, I would love a video camera on my, on my smartphone. That would be really cool. Oh, well, maybe the next iPhone will have one. Literally 30 days later, I got a notification on my first generation iPhone that said software update available. This update turns the, the still camera into a video camera wait what i don't have to buy new hardware i can literally use what's already here and 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 just enable a software update download a software update and install it that's fantastic i was thrilled and from that point on i knew that hardware would always get better if software updates were available now we've got a great question um from marcin he says and i apologize if i'm saying that uh, pronouncing your name wrong um he says are the software updates automatically done uh, or does it require an engineer to do so? 
that's up to you. So we actually build a feature in it uh, that allows you to check a box that says automatic updates. And so when a software update becomes available, it will automatically download it to the, to the customer's panel. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to monetize your software update. Hey, there's a new software update out for your panel. Uh, I can download that for you over the air for only $5. I can just add that to your bill. What do you think? Um, okay, sure. And then you add it to their bill and then you go into alarm.com's remote, um, remote toolkit and go boop, 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 push software update and it pushes out to the panel. So it wouldn't go until you did it. Maybe you look at the list of software updates uh, of things that are in the software update and you're like, eh, I don't know if I want to update my customers right there. I want to maybe, you know, wait a little while to see if that's something that we're going to do later. You could wait, you know, you could decide to do all of them all at once. You could wait and send an email. Hey, as part of our ongoing effort to make you happy, we are sending a software update to your panel. We plan on doing this at, you know, midnight on Friday, you know, or whatever it is. You decide. We give you the flexibility to manually update that software and you can push that update remotely from alarm.com or you can even tell the customer, if you want to check for software updates, swipe over to this page on your screen and click check for update. And if an update's available, it'll let them do it. So again, you decide how you want to do that. We put the power back in your hands. So I hope that answers your question. Um, are you able to set a time when it's downloaded? Uh, I believe so. It's probably a better question for alarm.com um, because it's their remote toolkit that allows you to do that. But I believe you can do that. Um, and I believe uh, the way you do it is you go into alarm.com and basically check for a software update, and then you can say, I want to schedule that. Now, I will tell you, if, if the system is armed in, a, in either stay or away mode, it will not do the software update because we don't want to run the risk of doing a software update and having the system down, um, doing its update or installing the update, um, and then the customer becomes vulnerable. So if let's say that you pushed a software update right now and the customer system was armed, it would wait till they disarmed and then say, hey, now installing a software update. And it would install that software update once it's in a disarmed state. And whether that was an hour from now or two hours from now or two weeks from now, it would wait until that customer disarmed the system before installing that update. So great question there. Um, Mark is on the line. I'm glad he's on the line. He says, I, I, I can't unmute. So hold on, Mark, let me get you back on here today because I think there might be some questions here that'd be good for you to, to answer. All right, make panelist. All right, Mark, let us know if you can hear us. I can unmute myself now, so we're halfway there. Perfect, perfect. That's great. Uh, can you answer that question that someone posed earlier? Like, can they schedule a software update through through the remote toolkit, the alarm.com remote toolkit? I can't remember. Uh, in short, no, I'm not going to answer that now. I think the answer is yes. Um, um, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I wasn't able to get on in the beginning. Technical problems. Um, just as um, Paul did, a little bit about me. I've been with Alarm.com for 18 months. Uh, I spend a lot of time out of the industry, in the high-tech industry, um, having joined the security industry in 1986 and leaving it again in 2003. So I think my first stint was longer than yours in total, Paul. But obviously that was a long time ago when it was a completely different thing. I was born in 1986. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, I'm an account executive at Alarm.com and my remit is to help uh, you guys get online and get onto the platform that the courses uses, which is Alarm.com. I'm there to support um, Paul and his team in the UK and Europe, uh, getting you a fail with how our portal works and how the platform works. I'm moderately technical, and that's why I deferred that question slightly about the automatic updates. I think yes, but as Jeremy said, you can certainly do that from your partner portal when you want to. And again, as Jeremy says, if the panel's armed, it's not going to do it. Um, so I'm here to answer any other technical questions as I can. Paul Biggs, my technical colleague, was going to be joining us, but he has been delayed on another meeting. And Jeremy, if you could send him another link that might prompt him. I, I forwarded, tried forwarding the one you sent me, but just in case that doesn't work. Um, okay. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, we'd love to have him on for sure. Yeah. Um, we got but some I'll, good I'll, questions here. So Nathan asks, how long will the hardware be able to keep up with the software updates before a hardware update is required? That's a really good question, a really, really good question. 
You know, it used to be you could put a security panel in and it would run for 20 years. And while that might be true, my flip phone probably would have run for 20 years. I believe that customers will want an upgrade long before the hardware needs to be upgraded. Now, if we want to talk about actual requirements to upgrade, because I know many of you are, are looking right now at a, at a cellular sunset that will require you to move from 3G or 2G over to LTE. Um, the LTE radio that's inside the IQ panel, uh, we are told that LTE has a shelf life of about 2033. Um, so we're looking at another 13 years. Uh, again, I think you think about how much technology has changed just in the past five years. And now imagine someone wanting the same thing 13 years from now. Um, I think they'll want a, a, a new panel long before you need to change it out. Um, in the now UK, the, I don't well, think uh, there's many people offering 4G at the moment, Jeremy. Okay. We are one of the only people um, offering the 4G LTE as well, and obviously there we've been. You know, that's another another great reason to switch over to IQ panel, so you can get people on Definitely. that 4G, you know, faster speed and better better technology. So, um, you know, having that 4G LTE built in to the IQ panel will allow this system to function and and, and work properly. And one of the things about the 4G LTE is we also have what's called dual path connectivity. So you can see that we released that back in our 1.0 software update. Um, back in 2013, we actually have LTE and Wi-Fi together at the same time. So if LTE is running slow, then, you know, Wi-Fi takes over. If Wi-Fi is running slow, maybe you're streaming Disney Plus or you're on an, an amazing webinar with uh, with Mark and Paul, you know, then, uh, you know, the, the bandwidth there, well, then the IQ panel uses its LTE connection anyway. So no matter which one you're doing, it will be there. And unlike our competitors, we're doing this simultaneously. So Alarm.com and Qualys has partnered together to ensure that those signals are going at the same time and not a, not a, a, a failover type scenario. So if you look at the way many of the competitors do, they say, hey, we're gonna send everything over Wi-Fi. And if and when the Wi-Fi breaks, there'll be a timeout. So if the Wi-Fi is bogged down and the signal can't get through, your router's down, your power's out, whatever the reason is, then it will wait about 30 seconds, a minute, whatever that is. And then it will turn off and turn on the cellular radio as a backup. This is not a backup and a play. This is intelligent redundancy. This is taking Wi-Fi and cellular and simultaneously measuring the pathway speeds at all times. The panel's smart enough and it's got a quad core processor in it. And it's constantly looking and saying, which way's faster? Oh, right now Wi-Fi's faster? Send it over to Wi-Fi and get that information to alarm.com as quick as possible. Oh. Right now, cellular's faster. Let's get it over LT and send it that way. So you've got two big pipeways, two big pathways to get up to the cloud and get there fast. So great question, Nathan. That, I really appreciate well. you asking. Just a quick one on that is um, the single path um, can be SP4 and the dual path can be SP3, uh, sorry, uh, dual path three. Um, and alarm.com do have a feature as well called smash and crash. So if the panel, mm -hmm essentially knocked off the wall and dunked in a bucket of water, it will automatically go to the arc and say we've lost all communication methods. And obviously they'll take the action that is uh, dedicated at the arc for such a, an instance. Absolutely right. And that's, you know, that is a patented uh, feature from alarm.com. We're really glad they've implement that, implemented that into uh, what we're doing because it's a really strong, strong solution. So thank you for that. Uh, Ian asked a great question. Can you roll back? If there's an issue with a new software update, you absolutely can. You can go back in and say, hey, I wanna go back to this other software that was a more stable software. We do a lot of penetration testing. We do a lot of, of software testing. We've got a whole team of probably 60 to 70 software testers who are just literally testing every piece of software before they go out. Um, but if for one reason or another, something is discovered, you know, we can't test every possible scenario in every possible place in the world. So there is occasionally a time where something happens, a little glitch. We're usually very good about getting a, a patch out for that software out right away. In fact, you're seeing the major software updates here. And what you don't see is that there was a, you know, you see 1.0 software. There was a 1.1, a 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. I think there was a 1.7 even, you know, and we're constantly putting out these smaller software updates to fix little things for little scenarios that might not affect the, the world, but maybe affected a small group of people. Again, another reason why everything software based is so nice because when you uncover something, we listen, we hear what the problem is, and then we try and push a software update out right away 
so that we can we can fix that and make that a, a good experience for you. So we want this to always be a collaborative experience, and we always want want to be interacting with our customers. So, um, and then um, while we asks, will the customer get a notification on the panel that there is a software update available? Yes, they will. Um, if you choose to to make that, now you could choose to turn that notification off so that you can control the software updates and don't and they don't see that. But if you want to, you certainly can put a notification on the panel. Um, uh, lots of comments here. We got lots of stuff to go through, but I want to make sure I get to everyone's stuff. Um, Simon asks, do you class the 360R as a competitor that doesn't have its simultaneous communication? I'm not familiar with 360R. Paul or Mark, are you familiar with that? Yeah, so the PM360R um, is a Visonic uh, product. And okay. The so then it would is, not have dual path then? No. Yeah. Uh, well, so we we did have a version which does have dual path, but um, it's not simultaneous. Um, yeah. So it's it two a, different pathways, but it has to choose one or the other at any given time. It can't. It doesn't yeah. run them simultaneous. Yeah. And it's okay. not as powerful as policy. For example, you can't do the software uh, upgrade. Um, mm -hmm. So that's 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 the real difference. They've not got the power. You've not got your inbuilt uh, five megapixel camera. Obviously, it's not a touch screen. Sure. Um, yeah, there's lots. And we're going to go through all those. Well, depends, yeah, it depends on, on the market that you're in and the price, the pricing strategy, but uh, Qualsys yeah. is far more powerful. Yep. Lefteris says, I have a Qualsys already playing and been playing with a couple months. It seems that Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz only, and I can't see the 5 gigahertz SSID. Uh, that's primarily because most of the cameras and other devices that you're connecting with are 2.4. We want to keep it on that same network. Uh, we actually hid the 5 gigahertz network in there. Uh, and then he also asked, are we planning on uh, adding five gigahertz in the future? Because it's in the software, we can turn it on if, if we need to. So um, it's something that if it's important to you and you could use it, uh, we could certainly talk about it. Um, there's lots of questions, but I want to keep on going on our, our presentation. We'll go through a few more features and things like that, and then we'll address some more questions here in a moment. I want to talk next about the panel camera. So if you look at, uh, you know, every single IQ panel has a camera on it, and we've done a lot of things with these over the years. Uh, we started with disarm photos, then we started, you know, not just a photo, but now we wanted to take a, an alarm photo during an alarm event. Uh, we wanted to send all those photos to the cloud, worked with alarm.com to do that. We then introduced alarm videos, being able to record a video during an alarm event. Uh, then we said, well, gosh, if we're looking, you know, if we're streaming that camera and looking at that camera, um, you know, then maybe we also want to do some local automation. Um, and well, let's turn it into a motion sensor. So now you can, with the, with the camera, you could walk into the room, the camera would detect that you've walked in the room and you could turn on a light, for example. Um, you could have a disarm photo captured after motion is detected. So if I used a remote ability to disarm, like Bluetooth, which we'll talk about in a moment, or you know my mobile phone or voice control uh, through the alarm.com integration with, with uh, Amazon Echo um, and uh, Google Home and et cetera, um, you know, I could do a voice control disarm and then it would still capture a photo after motion because the camera is looking for that motion. Uh, face recognition, we're using, you know, alarm.com's face recognition in the cloud to be able to say, push the disarm photo up to the cloud, look at it, see if that's really the person who's assigned to that, you know, user ID. And if it's not, you get an unexpected activity alert that says, hey, unexpected face occurred or no face detected at all. And now I can be aware of unexpected activity on the system. Uh, we also, through the Alarm.com uh, mobile app, have the ability to peek in. So I can actually go to my mobile app and say, peek in right now, or peek in the next time you detect motion, and the camera will do that for you. <coughs> and then we've been pushing Alarm videos to the cloud as well. Uh, when, when those Alarm videos are recorded, it push, goes up to the Alarm.com cloud, so you can retrieve it on your mobile device or on your laptop. So really, really powerful ones. We're also working next on live streaming from the app. So the goal would be to be able to go in at any given time and just see the live feed of your camera in the home from your Alarm.com mobile app. And Alarm.com and Qualsys are working closely together, uh, and Johnson Controls, excuse me, are working closely together to, to make that a reality. So it's a really, really powerful thing. And the best part is it's included with every single panel. So every single panel gets this uh, experience. I need water. Get this experience so that you can have um, you know, the added features. And if you want, you could turn that off. So if you wanted to say, hey, you know what? I don't want my cameras, my camera to be enabled uh, unless you pay for it. Maybe you want to say to your customer, 
oh, would you like to enable the camera? It's only an extra five dollars per month, or you know, or, or five pounds. Sorry, I'm speaking dollars. Um, you know, if would you like to enable the, you know, would you? I'll enable the camera for peek in, but if you want, or for disarm photos, but if you want the peek in function, that's an extra dollar per month, or that's a one-time fee of twenty dollars for a license, or you know, you can decide how you want to monetize that. But there's tremendous power in not only having that camera be part of the system, but also the ability to turn those features on and off remotely from alarm.com, you know, through a, the, the AirFX uh, remote toolkit and to be able to do all of those things as you want so that you can take the time to monetize those features and things like that. It's really, really strong. And again, Mark, thank you so much for being on the line today. You know, alarm.com has really been a tremendous partner with Qualsys over this. In your opinion, why is remote accessibility of all of these types of features so important? I think it gives the uh, the homeowner the security um, in knowing that they can peek into their house, look at their locks, uh, check their system is set from anywhere in the world. Uh, they can also get notifications when their children go to school whilst they're at work. So it really just gives them that peace of mind that the whole system is functioning as they want it to at all times. Excellent. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I thank you very much. Some great questions in here. Um, you know, if Peter asks, if my client has Visonic wireless sensors, can I simply up, upgrade to Qualsys by changing the panel? Yes, one of the radios in the IQ panel is the PowerG radio, which means that it's going to work with all your existing sensors. You could literally take the old Visonic panel out, put the IQ panel in, learn in all the sensors with the panel, and voila, you're done. It's really, really strong and really, really easy. Eric wants to know, and this, uh, Paul, this is a question for you, will we be able to purchase full systems in the UK? Yes, um, the Qualsys is available from ADI um, at this moment in time. Uh, they've got stock um, of the kits that we do. Um, we do one with a bell box, without a bell box, um, and we do a perimeter kit as well. <clears throat> we um, are also just waiting for the contract to be finalized between ADI and Alarm.com, and they'll be able to offer you a one-stop shop solution um, so they'll be able to offer you the alarm.com products to obviously um, go hand in hand with the Qualsys. Excellent, thank you for that. So hopefully that answers your question there, Peter. Peter and Mike and several others asked a very similar, uh, another question as well. Can the system be integrated with existing CCTV? Um, the, the panel itself directly cannot. However, alarm.com does offer a solution that allows you to take and integrate your cameras into something. And, and Mark, I don't forget the name of that device, but there's a device I know that you can take and connect to other camera systems so that you can then bring them into the ecosystem, right? Okay, well to my knowledge, in the UK, you can only have cameras with the alarm.com firmware on them. Um, my colleague Paul is on the line. I don't know, Paul, you've got any more to answer on that? Yeah, there is, there is, is a um, single channel video server that allows you to plug a coax camera into the system and make it an IP camera. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's available outside the US, including the UK, but I would have to double check to be 100% sure. My mistake, I was thinking yeah, Wi-Fi not... cameras, Paul, sorry. Yeah, yeah. and the alarm.com's cameras are amazing. So if you don't, you know, if you haven't played around with those, definitely do, but I can see from a, an existing standpoint where you've got existing cameras, um, if that's not a, a device that's available here in the UK yet, um, obviously through your demand, for, through your requests, things like that, we'll continue working on making that available. Um, for you, because if that's something that's important to you. So thank you very much for, the, for those questions. Um, Waid asks, how much space is reserved for images and videos? Uh, the panel holds the uh, basically 25 of each category for photos and five of each category for videos. So alarm videos, it'll hold up to five videos and each video is about four minutes long. Um, and then the disarm photos is 25 and they will automatically delete as new ones replace them. So if you've got 25 disarm photos on the panel and 25 alarm photos and you know someone else disarms the system, then the 26th disarm photo will be saved and the first disarm photo will delete. And so it's kind of a first in, first out type scenario. Now, if you wanted to keep those, it's very easy to go onto alarm.com, download the photos. You know, you can do it from your mobile app, download the photos right to your device and save them in your camera roll. So you could save all of them if you choose to, but just from a space and, and efficiency standpoint, we just keep the 25 most recent photos. So great question, great question. 
Um, all right, I'm going to keep going because there's lots and lots of presentation that we want to we want to go through. So the other thing we you know we've talked about user experience. I wanted to show you a little bit about the user experience. You can see the weather popping up. You can swipe over to get to your lights and your locks and your thermostats. Um, you know this is a a little interactive GIF. You can download one of these on um, the Qualsys dealer portal if you choose to uh, get a login. We'll we'll show you how to get a login later on. Um, and that way you can put maybe this on your website or use it for your sales materials, things like that. There's a lot of great marketing material there, but uh, this is a nice little ex you know, example of how the user interface works. You can see the little page with the software update um, showing in there. In fact, let me go to that again, because I know someone specifically asked about it. So if you wanted to tell your customer there was a software, software, software update available on this page right here, this little green icon that says software update would change to you know, red, and it would say update available and the button would be you know get update or install update now so um you'd see that right there plus you could see the little icon on the top corner there's the little name that actually gets replaced with your logo when you're an alarm.com silver program or above uh and when your logo's there the little one or message center will appear above your logo and you can check messages or the customer can check messages that way so pretty cool little experience there i want to share with you a feature that's not available yet but is coming in our very first software update for the UK. Um, it's, it's been one of our most popular features in the United States, and we call this Bluetooth Touchless Disarming. Uh, again, this is coming in our very first software update, and essentially you'll pair your smartphone with the panel. Now you'll see, here's my wife uh, with our son getting out of the Jeep, and as she walks into the house, the system disarms itself. She hasn't taken her phone out. The door lock automatically unlocks, she literally just turns the handle and walks right inside. This is a phenomenal feature. Uh, the lights turn on for her, the thermostat adjusts back up. When she comes home, the home literally greets her. Now, think about promoting this with your customers. Again, you can pair up to five smartphones with this and it's included with the IQ panel, just like the panel camera is, which means that when you are offering this to your customer, inevitably they're gonna say, well, I want my door to unlock. Okay, I'd be happy to sell you a door lock today. You know, well, I want my lights to turn on. Okay, let's talk about lighting options. Oh, well, I want my thermostat to adjust. Okay, let me show you our smart thermostat. You know, this is going to help you sell more devices because the customer is going to want that beautiful, elegant coming home routine. Um, again, this is not available in the current software uh, of the, the panels you'll buy today, uh, but it is coming in our first major software update, which I believe is only a month or two away, if not sooner. So uh, by the time you guys are out, I've finished testing it, running all your tests internally and things like that. Uh, it should be available for you. So we're really excited about this one. Um, the next feature that we're very proud of is, uh, you know, direct integration with alarm.com. The video cameras that Mark was talking about, uh, indoor, outdoor, and even video doorbells can be viewed on the panel's seven inch screen. So you can go in and say, I wanna see my basement camera. I wanna check on the kids playing downstairs, or I wanna look at the backyard, or I wanna look at the driveway, you know, whatever it is, instead of having to, go out and go to that place and I, I don't want to promote laziness but there is a matter of convenience there and i'll give you a real example the other day my wife asked me hey can you call the kids up for dinner now i could go walk downstairs and say hey kids time for dinner but i decided to walk over to the panel instead i activated the basement camera i saw them all playing there jake was playing playstation uh katie was playing behind the couch with her barbie dolls ethan was building legos and i said hey kids it's time for dinner. I use the microphone right on the screen. Okay, looks very similar to this. This is our, this is our live answer with the video doorbell. And I use the microphone right on the screen. I said, "Hey kids, time for dinner." And I heard what all kids do, right? Okay, Dad. Jake kept playing the video games. Ethan kept building blocks. Katie was still playing with Barbies. And I'm like, "Kids, time for dinner." Okay, but they still didn't move. Jake, put your controller down. Turn the PlayStation off. Kate. Put your Barbies away. It's time to come upstairs for dinner. Ethan, that's a great Lego thing you're building, buddy. Can you put that down and pause it right now and come upstairs? Okay, dad. And they immediately look up at the camera. Okay, dad. And then they come running upstairs. Now, that's a simple thing, okay? And I don't know how many people would use that on a daily basis. I do, but maybe not everyone does. But even just that experience, when you share an experience similar to that, imagine the, all the other experiences that come. Answering the front door, you know, in a COVID pandemic when you don't wanna to have to go to the front door and expose yourself and you can simply walk to your panel and say, yeah, just leave that package at the front door or yeah, leave my DoorDash right there, my, my, you know, my meal delivery service, leave that right there on the front porch and I'll wait 
you know, a few minutes for you to leave and then I'll come and sanitize the bag and come do it, you know, whatever. It's not just a convenient thing, it's a sanitizing thing. Um, there is real power and real consumer expectations that they want to be able to view their cameras on the screen. It's just something they want. They can Jeremy, view it from their phone, view it from the screen. Go ahead, Paul. We, uh, we were talking to a customer um it was about a week and a half ago now and he was looking to utilize the system for an elderly lady um so with the qualsys it doesn't have to be mounted on the wall obviously you've got your desk mount so the elderly lady can have the doorbell pop up on the qualsys she can obviously answer it on the qualsys and if you put on a lock as well she can unlock the door so she can see if it's a curer so she can let the curer in she could see if it's a a nuisance caller and she could obviously tell them to go away so for the yeah. elderly it could be utilized in a very strong way as well yeah you know a lot of people will say well it's all built into the phone i don't need that because it's on my phone but what happens when you go on vacation or you are you know back at work in the office or you're somewhere else and you know someone else is in the house watching you they're watching the cat feeding the fish you know taking care of your home what about your kids do you want to give your kids a smartphone so they don't open the front door when someone answers you know this flexibility gives the kind of features and technology that people are looking remember what i said earlier about the stats 43 percent of people are planning on buying a smart device and 25 percent say it's going to be a video doorbell well if that's the case people are going to buy a video doorbell because they want those features this is the same you know this is a video doorbell the only ad addition is what you're not going to get with you know ring and you know nest and all the others is they don't have a seven inch touchscreen. You saw the little hockey puck security system that they were offering. They can't show, display the video doorbell on the, on a screen because they don't even have one. So the fact that you've got the flexibility, do I want to answer it from the panel or do I want to answer it from the phone? It's a fantastic example of the coordination and collaboration between Alarm.com and and, uh, and Johnson Controls to bring you the very latest that your customers are actually wanting. So. Um, a couple questions in here. One is, uh, you know, internet's playing up. Can we make sure this is recorded? Absolutely. We're actually recording this session now. We're going to share that recording with you in a follow-up email that'll go out tomorrow. So thank you again for 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 checking in and I'm, I'm I'm being patient with us even though internet problems are happening. Um, Simon wants to know how many panels can you have on the system? Great question. So the primary all-in-one keypad is your first. Then you can have up to three additional touch screens, seven inch touch screens. And then you can have, I believe it's up to five additional power G rubber button keypads. So most residential installs, you know, having four screens throughout the house is more than sufficient uh, for a large install. If there's a certain area where they need to still have access, then you could have one of those power G keypads as well. So the only thing uh, you would have to bear in mind with that, Jeremy, just for the UK is yeah. that the IQ remote is going to be CE only. So if you're mm. to comply to EN grade two, the IQ remote would potentially bring down the system. So um, it depends how you install the product. Now, yeah. from perspective, for, for, for our household, we, um, we don't care about the gradings. We, we care about convenience and, and quality of life, which is obviously what quality stands for. So we utilize it to suit our needs. So don't necessarily focus on the grading aspect of things. I would say focus on your customer's needs. Yep, and we don't ever want to make any kind of assumptions about how you want to run your business, what kind of uh, you know things you want to do. With, he's right, the IQ remotes, the seven inch secondary keypads um, are not EN grade two yet. Uh, our hope is that we can get them to that point, but um, you know, keep that in mind as you're doing your install and do what's right for your business. So thank you for that. Um, all right let's see um ken asks do the touch screens all have live video doorbell and wi-fi and z-wave control abilities of the main panel very good question the secondary touch screens are identical in in their user experience to the primary panel with the one exception of the video doorbell the audio doesn't play through it on the secondaries it only plays through the primary so if you can view the video you can view the doorbell from a secondary keypad but you just can't talk to it yet that's one of the, the limitations of the particular hardware we've got right now but uh, we're working on it so um, James asked is there a limit on how many phones can have the app and is the app available on tablets um, Mark do you want to take that one is there a limit on how many smartphones can get the app and you know how many different users in the home can have can have the, the alarm.com app and is there a tablet enabled version of it 
the answer is they, if there is a limit on how many phones you can have, it's a very large limit. Paul, quantify that for me. Um, and the second part of the question, Paul, can you answer that as well? So um, there is no theoretical limit. There must be some limit, but the, in theory, it's no limit. And sorry, forgive me, what was the second part? Uh, it, it, th there is an app available for the tablet, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the things I've loved about Alarm.com is that no matter whether I'm using you know, it on my Apple Watch, I'm using it on my phone, I'm using it on my tablet, I'm using it on the computer, there is literally an app for everything and an integration for everything. I have uh, Siri shortcuts on my phone, on my iPhone. I have an Amazon Alexa integration for the uh, Amazon Echoes in my home. I've got a Google integration for the Google Home Hub in my home. So, you know, no matter where I want to access my system, I have the ability to do so, uh, whether it's mobile, whether it's in the home, you know, all of the different things I own have a connectivity. And Alarm.com has been phenomenal in providing uh, mobile apps and tablet apps and integrations for almost every platform. And whether you're using, you know, a Windows phone or an Android device or, you know, iOS or what have you, there is something for everyone there. So um, thank you again for, for, uh, for asking that question. Um, is the app free or is there a monthly subscription charge? So that's a great question. Um, you know, the, the app itself is included when you activate an alarm.com account. And so when you install a panel and activate that panel uh, on the alarm.com network, you will be charged based on the service plan that you're signing up on uh, for. And it will de depend on how many services you want to add, uh, what all you want to include the system. Uh, and it will also depend on your volume as you increase in volume. And that's something you can work directly with with Mark and the Alarm.com team to decide, you know, what what is your program plan, et cetera. Um, but then that that small nominal fee is just something you would pass along to your con to, to your consumer, uh, to the end user when you activate the system for them, and then also activate, um, you know, through to your monitoring station. So great question there. And, and just to pick up on that one as well, Jeremy, is something sure. that you do have to remember is that within the Alarm.com monthly fee, you get the unlimited data SIM card included. So if you currently Correct. buy, that's a really a good point because card. there's a lot of systems out there. You have to install the the rate the cellular radio and the SIM card separately. This is already included in there. It's a, all the SIM card, the LTE, everything's all built into the panel. So all you have to do is activate it. So when you buy a panel, the only thing you need to do is activate the account and then go install it in the home. It's very very easy. So no extra pieces to buy there. So great point. Let's keep going. There's another feature I want to share with you that's exclusive to Qualysys, and that's a built-in glass break detector. We actually use the microphones built into the panel, the high-fidelity microphones, to act as a glass break detector. And we spent months recording actual glass breaking so we could show uh, you know, the panel, hey, this is glass, this is not glass. We dropped keys on counters, we had dogs barking, we played movies, and the panel is probably, with a quad-core processor and dual microphones, this might be the world's most powerful and smart glass break detector. And as we continue to find new things that are or are not glass, we can push that over, over, over software update to improve the, the glass break detection library. Um, now, the range on this is generally about 15 feet from the panel. Um, so um, this, is, uh, this is not something that, um, you know, is going to cover the whole house. You know, there's always that joke of like glass break detectors can, you know, detect everything. That's one thing that we want to make sure we're clear about. But if it, if the customer likes it and wants it and you want to activate it, again, you could choose to activate it or not activate it and even monetize that. Would you like me to activate your built-in glass break detector? It's a one-time charge of whatever, or it's only a monthly fee of whatever. Or you could even say, tell you what, if you sign today, I'll throw in the glass break detector for free. That kind of thing. Again, it's great opportunities to turn on a feature that is included with the panel, no extra charge to you, but that you could monetize. And then um, I know we're at our time, so I apologize. We'll move quickly through the last few features here. Customizable photo frame screensaver. Uh, so when the panel's not in use, it turns into a, a you know photo frame, and you can choose to even add your own billboard images, advertisements, and things like that to it if you choose to. We've got software updates, which we've talked a lot about already. Um, there is hardwire compatibility, so if you want to um, use this panel with a hardwired system, there is a, a device that allows you to do that. This is a picture, a few pictures of the IQ remote uh, that we talked about, the secondary, the seven-inch secondary keypads. Uh, it's got a wide-angle camera, an octa-core processor, 
uh, a table stand that clips right in, or you can mount it to the wall. Um, it's a really, really phenomenal solution. And really, it, this one platform, we built in features that work for every solution. So whether you're doing residential or small business commercial or multifamily or builder or wellness, there are features specific to that. For example, we talked about a lot of the residential features and those are really powerful and really exciting. There's a lot of commercial features as well, like partitions and six digit codes, maybe turning the screen into an advertisement or a billboard in the home. Um, and of course, you can't forget when you're doing commercial power G device support because the long range devices with that high encryption is so important. Um, wellness, you can actually enable on the panel a wellness home screen that's designed for a wellness type install. So if you've got someone who maybe has a caregiver coming each day to administer some medication, there's a caregiver check-in. They can check in and the camera takes a photo of them, sends it to the loved one to say, oh look, the doctor or the nurse arrived today and they check out again when they're done. You can see what um, when that person has arrived and, and left. We integrate with things like fall pendants and bed sensors and chair sensors. So there's lots of great uh, products that Alarm.com and Qualsys provide to create a really great wellness um, solution, including Wellcam, which is a fantastic video camera designed specifically for the, the aging in place or wellness type, type of home scenario. We've also got a multifamily home screen where you can enable this and it's geared towards just doing an automation play. Maybe there's no security, but it's just lights, locks, and thermostats. We've got a special uh, system designed or special soft piece of software just for that and what by enabling it within the same panel you're buying for commercial wellness smb residential you simply enable this and it works in great in there unattended showings for property managers you know flood detection through our flood sensors um the ability to do live answers safely from the panel um inside the home instead of opening the apartment door lots and lots of um you know fantastic features there and we've done a lot of things from an installation standpoint to make installation really really easy and i know we're at our time I want to make sure we answer the last few questions that are that are in there, but I want to show you just our diagnostic tools that are on the screen. Wi-Fi tests, cellular tests. This actually shows the range of sensors in the home. This shows your Z-Wave map on the home. You can see every single Z-Wave device installed, whether they're being used as a repeater, whether or not they're connecting well, um, everything. So you can get it right before you leave the home. <coughs> Excuse me. Reduces the number of go-backs you're going to have reduces the amount of um, you know, time you're gonna spend in the home because you can make sure it's right. And we've got lots and lots of resources available to you. I wanna make sure that you know, from a training standpoint, um, from a product development standpoint, from a tech support standpoint, that we are covering all of your questions and supporting you as best we can. We've got so much to give you and so much to share. Um, but if you can only remember a few things, looks matter. The software is different, and we really want to focus on that software differentiation because that's going to set you apart in the market. User experience matters, whether it's video doorbells on the screen or Bluetooth disarming or just the touch and swipe you know, attitude of the, of the panel. We've got the very best ecosystem with all the Alarm.com devices, all of the Z-Wave devices, all the PowerG devices together in a single ecosystem that's more powerful than anything than Google, and uh, Ring and all these other companies are providing and that you've been able to do up to this point. Tremendous dual path cloud connectivity that we talked a lot about today and the very best support in the industry. So it's a really powerful solution and we really appreciate your time today. Let's go into and make sure that we've answered uh, any final questions and then we can part ways. Again, you'll get a recording um, in your email tomorrow. And additionally, our plan is to follow up with a technical webinar and we would ask you to invite all of your technical staff to that webinar here in a few weeks so that we can get them on and answer all their questions and get you rolling on this new solution. Um, so Ian asks, how secure is your system from an IT perspective? Very secure. There's only a, a couple open pathways out of the panel. Uh, that's to our cloud for software updates and that's to the alarm.com alarm cloud. Uh, and we take tremendous efforts uh, and we've got a whole team of penetration testers to ensure that there's no way to get into those clouds uh, and, and circumvent the, the security of the panel. And when you think about uh, the Power G, it is the best encryption in the in the market. So from an encrypted sensor standpoint, you've got the best encryption on the sensors, you've got the best encryption on the panel, we've got firewalls built in, um, and with the best encryption in the cloud. So from an end-to-end -end perspective, you will not find a more secure platform um, for this industry. So thank you for that question. That is something as well, Jeremy. If if you do a ring, 
doorbell, for example, they're, they're, they've been hacked on a number of occasions with Qualsys and with the alarm.com cloud, as, as Jeremy was saying, it's end-to-end -end encrypted. So it's very, very difficult to crack that. Whereas other competitors out there, like Ring, it, it's fairly easier to do. So just bear that in mind. Yep. Uh, do they have a function to ask for help for someone that's in trouble while we'd ask? Well, um, well uh, it depends on the kind of help you're asking for. If you're asking about emergency panic, yeah, right here on the, on the screen, you can see uh, there's an emergency panic button. And when you click on that, it pulls up a panic option. You can choose police, fire, or medical. Uh, if you're asking for help in terms of support, when you click on the envelope icon, or if it's your logo, uh, then it pulls up your customer service information, your phone number, your email, your chat, whatever it is. And you've got some section in there that where they can read and see your information. And within there, there's also built-in video tutorials. So when they're like, hey, I can't remember how to arm the system, or I can't remember how to add a user, or I can't remember how to add a phone to Bluetooth or, or whatever, they can watch the on-screen video tutorials and be able to see all of it. In fact, if you're on your smartphone or have it closed, what I'd like you to do is go and do a search in your App Store or your Google Play Store for IQ Panel, okay? Um, and it should, I believe we've made, we've opened this up to uh, the entire globe. If you find the IQ Panel app, not very easy to see, I've got a glare here. Find the IQ Panel app, it looks like this green square with an IQ Panel on it. You can download this app and this basically simulates the IQ panel experience, and you can play with, you know, live view, live answers, swiping through the pages, checking weather, um, you know, triggering an emergency panic, watching video tutorials. It's a great way to kind of play with the panel before you actually get down to your distributor and buy one. Uh, Wyatt asks, customers fallen down, can they get to the remote? Um, we have a fall pendant that allows you to actually trigger falls uh, and um, a emergency medical button. We've got, um, you know, certainly there's 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 lots of things. I mean, two way voice. We have this. You know, something happens. Please a go customer ahead. Customer asked us this yesterday, and we we uh, we suggested to use the PB one hundred one, um, the Power G one button fob, um, and then potentially utilize the two way audio internal camera, so the app could talk to somebody who's fallen over. So that is a that is a way to obviously uh, you can perfect. very perfect. Thank you. For that. Okay by visual and you can also um, talk to them as well. Yeah, so many good questions here. Uh, and thank you everyone for staying on a little longer so we can get all your questions answered. Um, P Peter wants to know, is there, explain the hardwire link. We have a device, um, and I'll show that page again here, that allows you to connect uh, your hardwire devices um, to the panel, um, to to a device and then those that device converts the hardwired signals into wireless signals i swear it was just here where my i know so it should my, should be available in the uk in, in about six weeks time um is what i'm led to believe and um, so for example if you were uh, taking over maybe an old center or uh, honeywell g2 or something like that and it's got 10 zones you could <laughs> wire them this little box and then it converts them wirelessly over the power g technology to the qualsys and it gets sucked right. into the panel so that's how you would see all and all the zones from a legacy system yeah good question dave asks do secondary keypads have glass break no the microphones on them were not sensitive enough for us to enable glass break detection on the secondaries but that's a great question and it's something we thought of and wanted to make happen but unfortunately that the hardware wouldn't allow it on the on the secondaries um Eric wants to know, what's the function of the daughter cards? Daughter cards are individual devices put inside the panel to allow it to speak to different wireless frequencies. So there is a daughter card for Z-Wave. There is a daughter card for PowerG. Uh, those are a daughter card. You know, those are all pre-installed, a daughter card for Z-Wave. Those are all pre-installed in the panel so that um, you don't have to do anything other than simply wire up the, the power and let it go. So, uh, but those do exist in the panel. Um, Nathan wants to know, and Paul, maybe you can answer this. Will Johnson Controls be covering UK, uh, United Kingdom tech support, uh, and is that available now? Uh, yes, we are covering that. Um, we also have a technical uh, account manager as well called Jason Upton. Um, so we can obviously get you his details if you need to. He has a, an office set up with all the smart home products with the Qualsys. He's got Alexa linked into it, his lighting system, Sonos, uh, different schedules and scenarios. So 
he's, he's very averse with the whole solution um, and he's there to support you at any point. So if you reach out to myself. Is that the same phone number that they would call for Visonic? Uh, not for Jason, but it would be for, yes, for, for, for the Visonic line. If you want to ring our technical support team, it would be yes. Great. Um, and James wants to know, and I don't know the answer to this one, so maybe we'll have to get back to you on this. Is it a 12 volt with a power pack or 240 volt? Paul, do you know the answer to that? It's um, it's a power pack, so it's an external PSU. That's that's what okay. that's what it is. Excellent. Well, it's been great, yeah, everyone. Really, again, thanks for letting us go over time a little bit. We hope we got all your questions answered. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to working with you. Really looking forward to you know providing with this this amazing solution. It really, truly is a powerful, powerful solution, and it has been. It, it took the United States by storm. It is the prominent panel in Canada and the United States. It's going into Latin America and, you know, sweeping everywhere. And it's going to help you change the game. Just, you know, I've seen dealers that have told me that the, their um, business has been raised by 20% or more just by upping the kind of quality and, and technology that they're offering. And consumers get very excited about it. They're going to refer more friends. They're going to, you know, add more devices. This is probably going to be the best decision you're going to make for your business, you know, in the in the past several years. So um, thank you again for all your time. And Mark and Paul, thank you for your time and being on today. Really appreciate you guys taking the hour. Uh, apologize for the, the technical difficulties getting you on today, but really appreciate you guys joining us and adding your insight to this. It's been really phenomenal. Thank you. That's a pleasure. Thank, thank you everybody for joining. Yeah. Everyone, thank you very much. Watch for our follow-up email tomorrow uh, with a link to the re recording, and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or comments, and we will be we will be ready and willing to help you uh, get onto this program. Thanks very much.